So here we are today visiting with Diana Wahlberg in Gothenburg, Sweden. Thanks for having us today to talk about your amazing work. Diana, can you tell us a little bit about the beginning of your career as an artist and how you decided to become a professional fine artist? Well, it's a long story, but for 10 years I worked as uh, like personal development and intuition and a lot with feelings and stuff. So I wanted to do something more. It started like three years ago and I picked up the brush and paint, uh, everything. And since then it's just been, I can't stop it. I've always known how to paint, I think. When I was uh, young at school, I did some oil paintings and stuff mm. and they, it was very good. And, but then I just, I stopped. And I did this 10 years um, personal development. And I think it was a long trip to get me where I am today. So when you say personal development, do you mean dealing with people's issues or yes, blocks uh, or things that are holding people back? And do you feel that your art grew out of that? Yes, a lot of uh, soul searching when people are lost and how to be comfortable in their own clothes again and finding their own way. And was there something about your, your life or your early childhood in Gothenburg or in Sweden that lent itself to this journey of personal development? I always was a seeker. I always felt that it has to be something more. It's like the soul of an artist. And then in a lot of your painting, there's a lot of iconic figures. We've got Marilyn Monroe, yes. we've got James Dean. Is there something about American culture or American society? I just, then? I love America, but I also love the icons. Uh, they do things that normal people don't do. We have a lot to learn from them. To be successful, whatever that is, is to be uncomfortable. You have to do stuff on your way so you can uh, go where you want to go. Especially in America, it's more, you know them more because, you know, the Hollywood, the movies and how I grew up, I saw, I mean, I looked at uh, American films. And, and these icons, like if we take Marilyn Monroe, for example, in this beautiful work yeah. of yours here, it seems that a lot of people, they project aspects of themselves onto these icons. Do you th feel that like this is still happening in our society these days? Yes, a lot. And sometimes the icons is misused. You want to look like them, mm -hmm. but that's not why I'm painting them. I think they are beautiful uh, from the inside and out and that they are real humans. They also have a bad day or periods of li in life, you know, and depressions and uh, they go through so many things. So they are very relatable. And in Gothenburg, you said when the sun comes out in Gothenburg. I think it's a very romantic city, uh, especially in the spring and summer. In the winter and autumn, it's quite dark. Spring and summer, the town, the people come to life. Mm -hmm. And it's green and it's, you know, we sit outside everywhere. People, if there's sun, there's people. It's a lovely town. When, when it's autumn and winter here in uh, Sweden, it's... It's, it's, uh, it's dark and you have to keep the, the energy flowing. There is a line between depression and creativity. Everyone is creative, but the real artist that really works with it, uh, they often have this loneliness and the dark hole within them. And when they can see that not as a weakness, but they can use that as a strength, then they are really creative. And it's easier in the winter time to be like that creative because you have to do something to have your uh, spirit up when it's dark a lot. It's a symbolic thing for dark outside, dark within. We have to go through our own darkness to find the light. And I think that is a very creative process. So finding some type of light in the darkness? Nothing is good, uh, right or wrong. So I think when it's dark and lonely and like an empty space, there is something in there. You can do something with it if you, if you don't believe in that hole. So you can find some type of constructive way. I think way. it's there you find it. Mm. It's through the dark, the black hole, the loneliness, you actually come in contact with the true creativity force within you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And is this what you feel has inspired your early work? Yes, and I actually believe that, I mean, I've felt so much emotions in my life so I had to do the 10 years personal development because I need to go through my own darks to, to really know myself so today as an artist I can 
I know what I want to give out. And uh, sometimes it's going through a very dark thing, and it's, but it doesn't come out like that. But that's the process. Do you feel that this is something that every artist goes through? I believe so, but it can uh, have a different course. But mm. I believe it's, you know, through the dark comes the light. Mm. Or the opposite. Sometimes you start and it's great, and then you fall down to a hole. Or, wow, wow. you know, it's a process. And I think every human being has it, but in a different kind of way. So thanks for inviting me to the launch year of your exhibition in Stockholm. Yes. It's very exciting. This must be a big moment for you. It's a very big moment, yes. So how are you feeling about this? I'm very excited. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous and I'm excited and I think um, it's a, a huge thing. It's, my, it's the capital of Sweden. So what can we expect in the future? After Stockholm, I'm um, doing a new series of the Stockholm Syndrome. It's going to be the main piece will be typical Stockholm Syndrome, like, you know, the victim and the perpetrator and uh, the codependency in different views that we all people can relate to. So your new series of work is called the Stockholm Syndrome? Yes. And you're going to explore different facets of the Stockholm Syndrome? Yes. I want it to be relatable mm. because I believe everyone has this within them, you know, a victim and a perpetrator. Mm. And uh, some kind of a codependency problem, you're connected to the power uh, in a relationship or... Uh, Personal power. Yes, I mean, if you look at the Stockholm Syndrome, if somebody has a gun, that's some uh, one type of power. But if you come home and you live in a abusive relationships, it's a different kind of power, but it's still a power and it's still the roles, you know, of victim and perpetrator. And I believe we all have it in some kind of way. So are these sub-personalities in people? Or different? Yes, I believe it's, it's, it's in us. Mm. Maybe everyone doesn't play it out, but mm. I believe it's in us because we all can be victimized or we can be a perpetrator. It doesn't have to be a huge or big, but, you know, we have it in us. So. And is there anything that particularly inspired you for this new series of work? I've been working a lot with people for many years and we need to uh, be aware of this victim and perpetrating and uh, the codependency. Try to please and also th look at ourselves. Why do we like our perpetrators? You know? well, b what's that? Some of us fall in love with our yeah. perpetrators. Yes. So maybe that's the victim in you that's driving the car. I see. You see? So when people come to see this new series of work, are we saying that this is going to launch in Sweden? Or is this something going to be for the US or a different market? This or? is going to be for America, the US, oh. yeah. So is there some reason why you feel that you have to share this new series of work, the Stockholm Syndrome, with the United States? Is there a reason? I always wanted to uh, go there and uh, do my work there also. So this is an exciting, so from Gothenburg to Stockholm to the United States. Yes. Is, is Diana Wahlberg going to be a household name in the States, do you feel at some time? Yes, I think so. You're definitely inspired by all of these American iconic. Yes, I am. So it could be that the range that they have more influence, right? Sort yes, some. because I believe the, in the world today, not just mm -hmm. America, I believe everywhere, people are a little lost, or we feel lost. We, we, maybe we're not lost, but we feel lost, and through uh, creativity and art and colors, we can find so much more within us, and it will help us, because I always think a picture says <laughs> more than a thousand words, and even more, and if you are a good, artist and you, you really can um, show your angle so it's relatable so you don't even you don't have to read mm -hmm. just look at the picture and you you will relate you know like you said a picture speaks louder yes to people these days yes. the visual image yes speaks louder and and also i mean it's not just the stockholm syndrome because that is also just one big angle at where I come from, I always, 
I want so much more in life than just go up in the morning, go to work and go home and do the laundry and do... That's not for me and I believe there is many people out there but we, we get stuck in the system and in patterns and, and if I can do art that will make you come, come alive in yourself through, through codependency or through a beautiful icon or whatever, I just want to wake you so you can you know, be who you are. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Diana Wahlberg, thank you very much for sharing some of your insights on your work and uh, we look forward to seeing the Stockholm yes. Syndrome. And thank you for inviting me to Sweden. Thank you.